This season preview is brought to you by Manscaped's brand new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. This luxurious lather cleanses and nourishes in just one step. Using coconut water, green tea, and aloe, this non-greasy daily formula is naturally hydrating and rich in antioxidants to revitalize the look and feel of your hair. So head on over to manscaped.com and use the promo code SACCITY for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. The new ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner from Manscaped. Take care of hair everywhere. The next team on our list, though, is the Carolina Panthers. Obviously, we mentioned, and Aaron's hot take during the show, or best take, hot take, fire take, whatever we want to call it, Baker Mayfield, starting quarterback, Carolina Panthers. Aaron, start us off. How different will this offense be with Baker Mayfield at quarterback? Yeah, I would say it would be more versatile, but we saw some versatility from uh, Sam Darnold last year. You thought he was going to lead the league in rushing. And he had all these rushing touchdowns and was running around the field. Uh, but what one thing I do think you get, I think you get more consistent play. And I know Baker, I'm talking about Baker Mayfield not being the best quarterback or a guy that can go out and win you a Super Bowl. But I do think he's more consistent than Sam Darnold is. Uh, I think he's gonna he's got playoff experience now. Uh, he was in an offense that had a good running game, good offensive line, and a well-balanced uh, attack coming from a Kevin Stefanski. Uh, I'm not sure how Matt Rule and him are going to work together, and that's still something up in the air. But I do think that he'll be able to get some connections with DJ Moore. I think that his arm strength and his willingness to take some chances will be a good thing for guys like Robbie Anderson. I think that will help. Uh, Maybe Robbie Anderson gets back in the fold a little bit because Baker is a little bit more of a gunslinger. He's going to throw the ball into some tighter windows at times and hold on to the ball a little bit longer. And that might allow these receivers to create some separation, create some space, and then make plays down the field. AJ, your thoughts on that? No, I think he's spot on uh, with with what Baker brings to it. I also like to t- talk about the mentality that Baker has. Everyone likes to bash on Baker and you know what he his talent level and blah blah blah. And I think it has a lot to do with people letting the talent get mixed in with the actual person of who Baker Mayfield is. Baker Mayfield is highly talented, and he also brings that winning mentality. That's something that the Panthers have needed since they lost Cam Newton of old. Not not new Cam Newton, who's I'm back. Not that Cam Newton, Cam Newton of old. Uh, so I, I do think what uh, what Baker Mayfield is going to bring to this locker room as far as mentality and a winning atmosphere, at least to want the real want to like win. Uh, I think that actually says something to what they're looking to do moving forward as well. So I'll speak to the mentality part of it. All. You know, it's all about so you, optimism. So Aaron, you think we see we see a we see growth from Baker Mayfield this year? Like, well, obviously, his contract is up. He, he, he's going to need a new deal. At the end of the year, are we going to be saying Baker Mayfield has earned not a big payday, but a payday? I don't think he has anything to prove to earn a payday. I, I'm, I get on Baker Mayfield because I don't think he lives up to the number one overall pick that we talk about. It's not because he can't play football. Um, You put Baker Mayfield on a number of teams in this league are a far better team than they were without him. So, um, and that's kind of what you're getting here with Carolina. I told you, I thought he might have a chance for Carolina to push for the playoffs with Baker Mayfield starting. And again, it's not because um, he can't do it. I I don't, I think he gets paid. He's just not elite to me. And I don't think he'll get paid as an elite quarterback. So I think barring some catastrophic injury or um, just maybe he falls off completely, um, I think he gets paid, but I think it's the payday of uh, maybe he gets twenty five million a year, twenty three million a year from from a team to to go start instead of that thirty five plus that most most of these franchise quarterbacks are getting. I don't think he slots in there. I think it could be looking at in comparison to that kind of payday that Nick Foles got when he went to Jacksonville, or I'm uh, yeah, like when he got twenty three million a year. Um, again, wasn't at the top of the quarterback market, but it was a very good payday for, for a quarterback that's kind of middle tier, middle of the road. And I think that's where he kind of slots in at. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but Baker Mayfield has to understand that when we're talking about Baker Mayfield, we are comparing him to these other elite quarterbacks because he was the number one overall pick. And that is the guy that's supposed to be taking you to Super Bowl. So if he falls short of that, then he's not living up to his draft status. And that's where the, the conversations come in about us quote unquote, denigrating him or downplaying how good he is. No, he's, he's a good quarterback, but is he elite enough to be one of the top guys in the NFL? And right now I would say barring some amazing season, 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns to like eight picks and Carolina in the playoffs. 
I don't see him getting that type of payday. I, th- I see it's around 25, somewhere between 25 and 30. But in today's NFL, that's not t- top of the quarter. You think it's Car- you think it's Carolina? I think if you're Carolina and he does that, if he if he if he has a 500 or better record, um, and you see the improvement from last year and you see the positive direction, I think you have to. I mean, unless you really just trust in Matt Corral, because then you're picking in the middle of the first round. You'd have to move up to get a, one of the stud quarterbacks. Like, it, I think you have to. It's so yeah. hard to find quarterbacks in this league. I think you have to. Yeah, I agree. Maybe it's a two year. Maybe it's a, a two year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like two year, 48 million little, or whatever. A little bridge prove like it that. deal. A little, yeah. little mm-hmm. bridge prove it deal after, after that. I, I, I agree. I, I could definitely uh, see that happening. We know that there's a lot of intrigue with the offense on the Carolina Panthers on the defensive side. We do. I think all of us agree that this defense has the talent and the the potential to be something special. AJ, what are you most looking forward to uh, maybe a player or maybe players on this defense that you're really excited to see this season? You know, I I feel like when I read this in the doc, uh, the answer you were hoping for uh, was somebody different, maybe a young stud who is coming back this season by the name of a J and a C and a horn, but uh, yep. I'm actually not going to go that route, even though that will be exciting to see him come back. I think there's something bigger here at play, and there's a player who's already been on the roster for the last two seasons who I really think is now going to step in as a leader, and that's uh, Jeremy Chin. Uh, this guy has been a stud for this Panthers defense over the last two seasons. Uh, the offensive or defensive rookie of the year uh, in 2020, uh, he was the guy who is now – combined for over 200 combined tackles over his first two seasons. And he's always in the right place. He's always making plays and he's always, always keeping that defense on his toes. So I think having this guy here is what's going to do something big for a guy like JC Horn, who's coming back and we know is going to be talented. I love Jeremy Chin in this defense. I think he's part of the reason that, you know, they were okay. Once again, moving off from Stefan Gilmore, who also was wanting to move on to, it's not, only the Panthers' decision here. I understand that. But having a guy like Jeremy Chin, who's moved from the linebacker position into the safety role and uh, has shown a little bit of versatility, shown he can get behind the line of scrimmage, shown he can play in the backfield and and lock down some guys. Uh, I really like what Jeremy Chin has been able to do on this defense, and I'm excited to see if he can keep that trajectory consistent throughout his career in Carolina or if, you know, eventually he ends up moving on to another defensive scheme and watching him do the same thing there. I'm going to hit you, AJ. I'm going to hit you. We've had previous Uh-oh. shows, and it seems like a lot of these shows with the teams that we've been previewing, a lot of the teams have had good defenses, and you've we've had a lot of conversation about teams being a top-10 defense. Carolina Panthers fall into that category this season? I feel like they're different. I feel like they we felt that way about them when they spent all this draft capital into them. Uh, you know, they got guys who can rush the quarterback like a Brian Burns. I really enjoy him. We talked a little bit about Yitor Gross Matos. Uh, I liked him. Uh, but now you, you look at guys like Shaq Thompson. Uh, you look at guys like Dante Jackson. And I feel like they have some names that I feel like they don't live up to what we were hoping for them to be. Uh, I think they're going to end up being a little bit outside of that, maybe in the 12th, in like the 12 area. Um, I don't know if they're going to fall in the top 10 this year. Um, better than middle of the pack, but uh, I, I don't think we're looking at a top formidable defense. Yeah, so disrespectful disagrees. to all my players. No, oh, I mean, why, why are you being disrespectful to Shaq Thompson? Shaq Thompson's been a really, really good linebacker in this league. Yes. And for the past, what, three or four seasons. He was one of the names tackles. I named as a player on that squad. Yeah, but you just named – he just he said he didn't live up. Like, he just said he didn't live up. No, I said up. as a hold, I don't – But you named him. I don't think they're going to – I said you have guys that we really like, like a Brian Burns who can get after the quarterback. We talk about a Yitor Matos Gross. We talk about a Shaq Thompson, a Dante Jackson. But as a whole, I don't think that they are going to live up to a top 10 defense this year. That is what that. I said. I'm going to check that comment because you I don't can think check you said that. that. But it's okay. But you listen, can check that. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with you on the on the on the where they finish. I don't know that they're a top 10 defense. Uh, statistically, but they were the number one overall defense through the first couple of weeks last year yeah. with JC Horn and Stefan Gilmore. And, but then they also lost guys like a Hassan Reddick um, who's now right. in Philly and, and that's going to hurt them as well. Um, I, I think there's going to have to be an adjustment period. This defense still has to grow a little bit. And there is some young guys. This is the type of defense to me that 
I don't know. You name names. I don't know that they're the most notable team as far as names. Like when you talked about right. those guys, but I don't think they're well known across the league, but I do think they perform and, and work well together. And I do think they have the pieces to have one cohesive unit to have a really good defense. And if the offense is good, you don't need a great defense. You need a good defense. If your offense is bad, you need a great defense. So I don't think this defense has to be great. I think they have to be good. And I think they are good. And I think that if their offense can perform just somewhat good, I think yeah. they'll be fine. Yep. First three weeks of last year, their offense played pretty well. Darnold was playing okay, mm-hmm. yeah. and they were winning games. And you could see it. You're like, man, this team could be pretty good. When the offense stopped playing well, Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. They can't move the ball. Defense is on the field longer. They can't hold yeah. up as long. And then you start to get exposed, and then injuries happen, and everything kind of goes downhill. So I think it's more important for that offense to dictate how that defense looks. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. On offense, I'm looking for – Baker Mayfield to get the ball to his weapons. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, he cannot hold on to the football. He needs to get the ball in their hands. We talked about the weapons of a Christian McCaffrey. You can throw 15 screen passes a game. If you get the ball in Christian McCaffrey's hand, guess what's going to happen? Good things. DJ Moore, electric with the ball in his hand. Robbie Anderson, get push the ball downfield and don't be afraid. I'm I'm not entertaining that injury talk. Um, these are <laughs> these are things that Baker Mayfield has to realize. He cannot hold on to the football the way he did in Cleveland. Get the ball out, get it to your playmakers' hands, and let them do their job. Their job is to make plays, and you have guys that can do that. Terrace Marshall is he now in, another year in. Um, we could talk about their tight end and Tommy Tremble. Like I really like him going into this year. Yeah. Uh, so I think they have the pieces on offense. It's going to be up to Baker Mayfield to not try to play hero ball and just say, you know what? I'm going to get the ball to my weapons and let them go to work. And uh, and then obviously the health of Christian McCaffrey, because if Christian McCaffrey is healthy, that offense is a different animal. Yep. You can't game plan for that guy. There is no game plan for him. I- I've watched it every year. He's been healthy. I don't care what you try to do. Put eight in the box. He beat you in the pass game. Put, you know, five DBs to stop him in the pass game. He'll run right down the middle on you. And he's ultimately the best running back in football versatility wise when healthy and uh that so that's a, that's that's all carolina should be looking at health of christian mccaffrey and baker get the ball to your weapons yeah let's go into these prop bets here and I'm, I'm gonna add a little bonus one for you aaron just just especially for you and your christian mccaffrey love um right here we have over six and a half wins for the carolina panthers over 22 and a half baker mayfield passing touchdowns over nine and a half brian burns sacks and then Aaron, just for you, uh, comeback player of the year odds for Christian McCaffrey is at plus seven fifty. Does that Ooh. entertain you at all, or do, would you rather choose one of these, uh, one of the three prop bets I have listed here? Comeback player of the year is usually somebody that was hurt. Check. It's going to be tough though, because I, I also like other running backs in there. I like Saquon, um, and, and I told you how much I like him. I, I like him in that role. No, I wouldn't do comeback player of the year. He could win it, but I wouldn't bet on it. I think uh, bring those prop backs, bets back up. I'll tell you real quick. Uh, to me, it's the over on 22 and a half touchdowns. I think it's disrespectful to Baker Mayfield. I mean, I, I know he's not, like I said, I, I'm not the biggest Baker Mayfield fan, but with that offense and the versatility of those those guys and DJ Moore and all, and all that stuff, uh, I mean, he he threw 17 last year, and he was beat up all year. Played like crap, and only played 14 games. If, he's if never had tre- than, he's never had less than 22. If his trend continues, he had 27 his rookie year, 22 the year after, 26, then 17. So, if the trend stays, he's gonna be over 22 and a half. So, five. so, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. Next at 20, yeah, 25. Um, AJ, what about you? Which prop bet are you uh, locking in? Yeah, that was that was the one I was going to go with. Um, I'll tell you what, though, I'll also take uh, since he went there, I'll go over six and a half wins. Uh, I, you know, when we talk about schedule mm-hmm. prediction, you'll probably ask me a question. Uh, but, you know, they have Baker Mayfield now. And uh, I do believe Baker Mayfield is good for a couple wins uh, from where I didn't have them before. So that's I'll give him that's. A seven. That's where I wanted to go. You had him at five and twelve before ba- before yeah. Baker Mayfield was the starting quarterback. So you're taking the over on six and a half wins. Where do they land in terms of record? I actually super loud. <laughs> Sorry, acoustics were <laughs> great for a second. Par- Carolina Panthers and Baker Mayfield. <laughs> yeah, I, I have them at seven and ten. Uh, 
I, I think uh, Baker's good for a couple extra wins. I don't think it's a gangbusters type thing. And I know we I just talked about their defense as a unit. Uh, I, I do really like their secondary. Um, but, you know, if, if these injuries cut, keep coming back, if uh, if you look at a guy and Chris McCaffrey does miss some time and some games are going the wrong way, if Robbie Anderson can't get it going again, things of that nature, uh, I don't I don't see them going, you know, eight, nine or nine and eight or so on and so forth. So I'm going to keep them at a seven and ten. OK. Aaron. Uh, check the chat, Vinny. Check the chat. Uh, I have nothing in the chat. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, uh, um, because okay. this is my first. This is my first time. My first I'm time. actually. This is my first time. It's my first time. This is my first time. I'm actually changing my record. Holy shit! And again, we we did these records back before Baker Mayfield trade. But I told you guys, I can't preach on here that I thought Carolina had a chance at the playoffs, and then come and give you my record that I had with Sam Darnold at five and twelve. Um. I have Carolina going nine and eight with Baker Mayfield, which is going to be right on the borderline of them making the playoffs. Um, before, before the deal, I had them beating Cleveland, Atlanta, Denver at home at Seattle and Detroit it was five wins. Now I have them beating Cleveland, the giants, Arizona, Atlanta, twice, Denver, Seattle, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. I'm not Baltimore. Sorry, Pittsburgh and Detroit. Um, I think they get to nine wins. Baker Mayfield healthy. Carolina nine and eight is where I have them. Wow. And you didn't and you didn't lock and load that bet though, of six over six and a half. You I did not. Um, I, I honestly, when you brought up the schedule thing, I, I changed. Um, I, that's when I started looking into the schedule, and I was like, ah, I remember I didn't pick anything with, with Baker there. It was yeah. all based on Sam Darnold or, or them drafting a quarterback. Um, Baker Mayfield, again, I'm not a huge fan, but he can win games in this league. And they are, a, they were in need of a quarterback that can win games. And I think they have a team, a talented team around them enough to get some wins and enough easy games to, to stack up a couple of wins. And then I think in the NFL, you find upsets, you find ways to beat teams like, you know, the Cardinals one time, who's a good team, but we're kind of uh, not sure about them. Um, and I think they get to nine wins. I I th that's 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 the first big pivot we had we've had on this show here. This is this that was that was it. I mean, it's fluid. Everything has to be fluid. You have yeah, to be able to. I'm mad at it. To, to roll with that. Yeah, I um I think they beat Cleveland. I think they beat the Giants. I can see I can see eight and nine. I can see eight and nine from this Carolina Panthers team this year. And it's again again we've been on the show many of times before. What either bashing Baker May like we've been on the show giving Baker Mayfield exactly what he deserves, deserves. And, on on both yeah. sides on both sides whether yeah. it's good good deserves or bad deserves we've been on both those sides we're not Baker Mayfield haters by any means and we will give him the respect that he deserves he is a good quarterback and maybe in this offense they let him let Baker cook people let have to understand people have to understand circumstances and facts change. So when people were yeah. like, oh, you changed your opinion or whatever, like, yeah, my opinion changes at times. When facts change, when things change, when circumstances change, Baker Mayfield's circumstances have changed. He's no longer in Cleveland. Do I think, again, does it change uh, what kind of quarterback he is? No, not necessarily, but the team around him, a new environment, a chip on your shoulder, something to prove. Maybe it's that Baker that had something to prove to become a number one draft pick overall when he wasn't, when people didn't believe him. And now you get that same guy. So um Facts have changed, circumstances have changed, and therefore I reserve the right to change my opinion on how effective I think he can be in the NFL. And like I said, I think he can be good enough, um, not elite, but good enough to win games. We see it every year. Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, guys win nine, eight, nine, ten games, and they're not elite quarterbacks, but they have good teams around them and they find ways to win games. So um, I think we're all kind of in that mind space now of they'll be better with Baker Mayfield than yeah. they would have had he not shown up. And I think that's really what the record changing really says about the situation. It doesn't matter. Nine, eight, seven, doesn't matter. They're going to be better now with Baker Mayfield. You ready? No. Cause AJ has to give his, uh, his, uh, what, what would be the defining part of the schedule? We did not go over that because we were rolling. Oh. Things are just, it's fluid. Oh. It's fluid. AJ, what's the defining part of the schedule now that we have, really gone into this 
Is it not only week one? Is it not? <laughs> no. Uh, it, it's down the stretch. Uh, it's it's the times that's going to matter. They have some winnable games there. You look at Seattle, who could be who could be a, in a better situation than we've talked about at that point in time if their defense is playing like some of us believe they might they have the capabilities to. Uh, you look at Pittsburgh. We don't know who will be the signal caller at that week. Uh, the only, I mean, the only game you look at that you know is probably a loss is at Tampa Bay. And the Saints, to me, at that in that week, if they're not already set in stone on where they're going to be, can be a toss-up game. So after their bye, they have to come back and hit strong. Uh, and, and there's some winnable games in there, and there's some games where you at least get to know a little bit more about who they're going to be, depending on if they're in the postseason or not. Aaron, I'm not sure I can do this. Not, I'm not sure I can do this here, buddy. Wow. I'm not sure. Wow, 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 wow. I think we need to talk. What I are we talking we about? Need, I ain't I got all night. What do you want to talk about? I think we all as a group need to talk about the power rankings and where the Carolina Panthers fall. <laughs> okay? And let's just okay. – let's. I want to talk about this. Live on the show, a discussion on where they fall. AJ, you have them at 24. Aaron, you bump them all the way up to 16. Yeah. The way our power rankings work right now, we have Minnesota at 17, Arizona at 18, Cleveland at 20. Nobody I'm, at 19? No one at 19. I'm okay with putting the, the them at 19. Are the Carolina Panthers better than the Cleveland Browns? Uh, Deshaun you, Watson, Cleveland Browns. So, so this is what you have to take into consideration. You can't say a Deshaun Watson – Cleveland Browns because Deshaun Watson ain't playing the first 11 weeks. The power rankings matter that's based on the regular chunk. season. Yes. Yeah, so that's half, that's part of the season. And if, if you really want to be honest, Mike, it makes me even more consistent because I had the Vikings going nine and eight, the Cardinals going nine and eight, the Panthers going nine and eight and the Browns going nine and eight. So mm-hmm. how you mix those four teams, it fits perfectly. I would say that I All would right. give Minnesota and, and Arizona the slight edge over Carolina. So maybe you can push them back. To 19 and, and that looks like it fits in perfect to me all right so aaron where do the carolina panthers fall <laughs> in our power rankings carolina panthers the addition of baker mayfield is heading over to the nfc the nfc is a much weaker conference carolina should be able to build up some of those victories they will slot in at number 19 on the preseason sack city power rankings i get you